Every day, we strive to preserve traditions that have spanned generations. Around every turn of the bayou, Mother Nature reveals unique people, places, and experiences. And the bounty of animals and fish. Well, in Louisiana, we just call that land yak. I'm Don Dubuque. I'm Chris Lacop. I'm Captain Martha Spencer. Join us as we document the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Stuttgart, Arkansas. It's Halloween weekend, early season speckle belly hunting. I can actually hear the geese flying around. You know, we got perfect weather for this. The birds are just absolutely thick, and what a great experience to come check them out. Arkansas is known nationwide for its abundance of waterfowl. From greenheads to speckle bellies, the food-rich topography draws migratory wing flappers and shotgun blasters alike to its fields. The amount of, of rice grown here and the, just the agricultural and, and the amount of land up here is just much more appealing, you know, for speckle bellies here. I mean, they don't have to migrate all the way to Louisiana anymore. They're, you know, there's way more acres of rice up here, and that's why the speck stay up here. You know, I mean, a lot of them don't even make it into Louisiana. An obligatory photo in front of the Mac Prairie Wings duck is as common as the constant shooting of limits. <laughs> but we, along with 27 other waterfowlers from nine states, are here for one thing. It made sense to me, you know, to do the Cajun invasion to introduce everybody to the, you know, the speckle belly hunting that's up here. The opportunity to come up with a bunch of people from Louisiana and elsewhere to come hunting early. I'm not going to miss that if I can help it. Been wanting to go on the trip, uh, Cajun invasion. When I saw this one, I said, well, we got to go to this one. I happened to catch social media. <laughs> I definitely ought to check it out as it was on only two birds left on my list for the, for the Grand Slam. Coming up, opening day of Speckle Belly Geese in Stuttgart, Arkansas. Woo! It's opening weekend of the early season speckle belly goose season here in Stuttgart, Arkansas. We've invited hunters from near and far to join us today on a special Bayou Wild TV adventure. Got a good morning from Stuttgart, Arkansas. We're missing you this morning. Yeah, I'm missing you too. The Bayou Wild team is up there without me. They're headed out for some giggle chicken shooting in Stuttgart. Yeah, we know what giggle chickens are. If you ever listen to a speckle belly goose, that's a good nickname for them. The guides at Duckdown Guide Service placed dozens of decoys in front of a large A-frame blind that accommodated a much larger than normal group of hunters and it didn't take long for the sky to fill with some incredible sights and sounds.
know, I mean, we, we got into the blind, you know, um, there and there. There were special bodies from the deep door work in the deep corner since before shooting right. And as soon as we got set up, I mean, that first volley come in, and I, I knew right away that it was going to be, it was going to be one of them world class hunts. When the first flock came through, I was honestly shocked. My jaw hit the floor and I was sitting there like a kid on Christmas looking at a pile of presents because even though you've done it before, or maybe you haven't, just to see that and to see the numbers and see them so well is, is breathtaking. After y'all shot it in that first volley and they kept coming, yeah, it was setting up to be one of them hunts to remember. try to get the biggest group I can in centered up with the A-frame. Like today we had, you know, 26 shooters, so uh, we had to make a big hole. And uh, I usually won't call the shot unless it's, you know, a good amount of birds where everybody gets shooting. It's a lot of fun. At first it was a little overwhelming, but once you realize, you know, get up and shoot and just keep shooting until you know you shot your two birds, the guides will do a good job to make sure nobody overshoots their limit and, uh, and just shoot and have fun. Guys have been, you know, scouting all week long. That there was a, you know, 20,000, 30,000 specs on this on this roost. Typically, we don't hunt in this big of a group, but it was just with that many specs, and it just made, you know, good sense to hunt that many people in that group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was so cool. You you gotta wait, and then you gotta watch them, and you gotta wait some more. We've hunted speckabellies before, but to say that this was a, a banner hunt is definitely accurate. I mean, the amount of birds we've seen just flying around, um, coming into the decoys, and just completely unaware that they were about to get blasted was epic. What was also great, I think a lot of people realize this too, is that we got to watch the bird. geese here <laughs> and it's like if you've ever seen Alfred Hitchcock's the birds you'd probably be terrified right now because that's what it looks like except they're not chasing us we're just slaughtering them uh, probably seen I don't know 10,000 birds
to see the birds fly, to watch them decoy, to hear them, and then to see the dogs retrieve is, is honestly some of the most fun part about it. Well, we're out here on opening day. There's still birds flying around everywhere. What, what makes speckle belly geese to you so different and so special? Well, <clears throat> to me, the hide is, is what makes it the hunt. Um, specks to me can see as well as a turkey. And uh, if you don't have a good hide, I don't care if you're on the X, you won't kill them, even when they're tough. And uh, just to see them come, you know, right in within 20 yards is phenomenal. Kill up! I've, uh, this is my third speckle belly hunt. I did one in Louisiana and one in Arkansas last year, and this one by far the most birds. Obviously, opening day gives you a slight advantage because the birds are kind of, they don't really know what's going on, but what, how much harder does it get from opening day to mid-season or late season? Typically, <clears throat> later in the season, you know, it, it, it gets harder to kill them. We usually kill them day in and day out. We follow them, we try to stay under them. Um, I mean, they hang this farm pretty much the entire season. So, I mean, we struggle a little bit as far as getting the birds to commit later in the season. But as far as shooting out, we don't have no trouble with that. On a, on a culinary scale, where does the speckle belly rank in, in the waterfowl world to you? It is the best piece of meat you will eat. <laughs> I think it's better than beef to me. And uh, cook it medium rare, you can't beat it. The coolest part is, is meeting new people. And I really like when, you know, guys bring their kids and, and uh, like to see their first birds and their first hunt. And uh, it, it really means a lot to me when they can actually achieve that when they do come. So. Back at Crosshair's retreat, we reflected on the morning's hunt and chat with other hunters about their experience. Being a New Orleans native, it's nice to see, you know, people in the outdoors in Louisiana, which I miss a lot. And then I had the opportunity to come up with a bunch of people from Louisiana and elsewhere to come hunting early. I'm not going to miss that if I can help it. So where do you live now and kind of how, how did this work out for you? you I, I live in Memphis. Um, and there's some other natives. My, I live with my brother lives there also, and so we hunt around, you know, in Arkansas and Mississippi. So it's a it's a nice opportunity to come over here and just kind of start the season a little bit earlier than normal. Actually, been listening to Don a long time, over 30, well, over 20 years. And uh, when the Bayou Wild actually started, went go to Martin Seafood in Madisonville, and uh, probably maybe the second ep episode, and uh, went have lunch and really just get, got into everything and was excited about it and uh, I kind of, uh, I've been wanting to go on the trip, uh, Cajun Invasion, missed a lot of them and when I saw this one I said well we got to go to this one. So uh, this is really fantastic, accommodations fantastic, great hunt, never seen so many geese in my life, uh, it was wonderful. Over here is very nice experience, make a lot of great memories, camaraderie with everybody and all the guys take a chance to get out of the real world and experience life. You know, I've heard about Stuttgart. It's the Becca for duck hunting and I always wanted it's a bucket list. Mm -hmm. It's a bucket list thing. And so I got the opportunity to mark that off my list. How was the hunt? It was good. It was really good. Uh, a little different. I kept expecting the blind to open up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so the first time the birds come through, I'm waiting. It's cool to see them. Everybody's shooting and I'm yeah. wondering where the blind hadn't opened up. Right. But uh, once I figured it out, it was fine. So in a previous episode of Bayou Wild, we interviewed PJ Damari from Mandeville, who has completed his North American Grand Slam, and we got to see all his birds. Well, turns out we've got a second, second gentleman here who's about to complete his. He is one bird away. Thanks to this trip, he came here with two. He knocked off the speckle belly, and Carlos, what's the last bird you got to get? A cackler. What's, so, what is um, a cackler? It is basically a Canadian goose that's the size of a mallard. Um, 
So it's um, unique. I plan on going to Seattle, Washington this year, and um, I'm going to finish that list. Excellent. <laughs> For folks who don't know, because not everybody that watches the show is a hunter, but what is what is a slam, and what did it take to accomplish it? I mean, you said you're one bird away, but what is it, and what does it mean to you? Um, it, it, I had no idea initially waterfowl hunting that that's what I was going to do, especially living in Ohio. There's um, only a few species of birds. Um, we have wood duck, mallard, Canadian geese, and that's pretty much that's pretty much it outside of some migratory birds that happen to come through. Um, and just as we and my friend continued on, we found ourselves making a year or two, um, like one or two trips a year, where we'd go out and would look for different species of birds. And it turned into this idea that when we heard about the North American 32, it's like, maybe we ought to try that. You know, it'd be really cool to get at each species. And that's taken me from Island X and St. Paul and the Bering Sea to clear to Florida, up and down the East Coast. It's, it's, been, a, it's been an amazing journey. And from laughs shared around the campfire or playing horseshoes to high fives in the blinds, strangers became friends. As the afternoon turned into night, stories grew and the admiration for this unique experience was evident with everyone present. The camaraderie sitting at the table, everybody has the same ideas, the same want to knows, the same everything. They all want to talk about death. To cap off an incredible day, the Lodge chef treated us to a meal fit for a five-star restaurant. A little sriracha. It's down our Tex-Mex world. Mm -hmm. A little drizzle. It livens it up a little bit, especially for those that like a little spice in their life. OK, so we've got goose a la verde is what we'll call this dish. It's a great kickoff to hunting season for a lot of folks because it's still early season. Duck season hasn't started yet. It's not too crazy up here, but everyone's got that anticipation for that speckle belly season and heading into full duck season soon. As our inaugural hunt kicked off, we didn't quite know what to expect. We knew that we had filled all the slots, but we didn't know how enthusiastic people were going to be or from how many places they came. We use the term Cajun invasion loosely. You don't have to be from Louisiana or even live in Louisiana to come on these hunts. We just encourage people from different places to come check out the things that we like to do. Me, me being a guide for 20 plus years, I've, I just love meeting you know, people. I mean, uh, I enjoy meeting people from all over the world, and, and I've made a lot of great friends. I made a lot of connections in the hunting world by doing this. The fellowship in hunting does not discriminate. Three generations of hunters, Yankees to Southerners, men and women. It proves that outdoorsmen will travel any distance to feed their passions. We've got them from Virginia, Kansas, Arkansas, um, Ohio, you know, so we had a pretty broad base of people that never experienced Speckle belly hunting in Stuttgart, Arkansas. You got him, huh? <laughs> got him. I've always wanted to go to Stuttgart because I've just heard so much about the history of waterfowl here. Go online, watch the videos, and then if you have the opportunity, get involved and go on a trip. Well, Don, we missed you this time, but, but I tell you, Martha and Chris really took care of us, so maybe next time. It's done. Right. Tell, tell took them out. About it. <laughs> hey. Everyone had their own reasons for attending this Cajun invasion. However, aside from limits of speckle belly, every hunter left with a sense of camaraderie, like-mindedness, and a love for speckle belly goose hunting. We will 100% be back to Stuttgart, Arkansas. Perhaps we may be able to put something together with some ducks and geese, but either way, the geese alone is worth coming for. And we are always grateful to share these experiences that make us Bayou Wide.